This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Good everyone and welcome to another podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez and so glad and honored to be with you guys today. And today, here in my city and state, it is freezing. It is cold. We have not had that in a long time. It's been crazy. But hey, hello winter, right? We're not too far from, what, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And so, hello winter. We welcome you. <laughs> so, uh, And welcome all of you guys as well with us. I hope you are staying warm and hopefully cozy where you are right now. And thank you for being a part of our podcast, our ministry for so many years. So many of you mean a lot to us. So today I want to talk to you guys. We're going to sort of flip the lid here. I want to get back into more positive thinking and law of attraction and and having vision boards because I believe it's very, very important for every generation and also being reminded every couple of years just how important it is to write the vision, make it plain. And the Bible makes it plain when it says that. It says, make the vision known. It says, write it out plainly. And I love that because of the fact it is something that we've got to begin to keep before our eyes, which is our future. The Bible says he's come to give us life and life more abundantly, but also he says in Jeremiah that, you know, there's a bright future, hope and a bright future. And we want the expectation of knowing that our future is amazing and bright, do we not? And so I wanted to talk a little bit about today, sort of my life, just sort of push you guys along, hopefully along the path of your life and push you over the edge of what you should be doing and maybe something you want to do that you maybe you feel like, eh, it's just too hard for me or it's a big uphill climb. Well, let me tell you something. There was a huge uphill climb for me about 20 years ago. Life was going great. I did a, uh, I worked at a company that was like a joint venture between uh, two different companies, which were, were actually Ford and, um, and Power Diesel. And so it was this amazing joint venture and I had a great job. However, I've always known, because I've always been traveling, speaking, in conferences and churches for so many years, that I've always known that I was out of place. And many of you even today feel like, you might feel like you're a misfit, or like I'm out of place, like I might, I might make good money or bad money, but I just feel so out of place. Let me tell you something. Don't let that out of place feeling, don't let it go. Don't find yourself saying, well, you know what, it's just life. Everybody has jobs they hate. You know, it's just life life, you know. No, don't do that. Because there's something in me that I found within two or three jobs during that during the span of, let's say, five years where I was just coming and going from job to job. And I thought, it wasn't even about a money situation. It was just the fact that I did not feel as if I was the person for the position. I didn't feel like I was the person that needed to be on that job, on that company. I just, that was not who I was. And it wasn't because I was better than anybody else or less than anybody else. It was because I knew that as a prophet of God, I knew all my life that there was things different about me that I knew that God was pushing me over the edge. And once again, it's not because I'm more special or I got this amazing gift. No, not at all. It was because there's something in me that just felt like I knew that I knew that I knew I was not where I needed to be. And if you feel that way today, I want to encourage you today. Take a leap of faith. You might not can take it right now, but I want to share with you what happened to me. There was a period of time in my life, probably once again 20 years ago, where I had literally felt that and I knew in my spirit there's some kind of vibrational feel as if it was echoing through my heart where God was saying, hey, this is what I want you to do. Hey, I want you to own your own job. Hey, I want you to you know, own your own business, I should say. I want you to be able to do this and do this. God even told me to give a three month, um, excuse me, a, a, a three week um you know, place where instead of a two week notice, I could go to three week notice because I feel like God says, be over the top with this, you know, give them extra week, you know, and, and God told me months before October 1st that I was going to be able to put a website together. Here's what's going to happen and, and everything else. Now at the time, did I think or know that I was going to be a writer or an author? Not at all. But yet I've always had stuff in me that I wanted to share and speak. And I spoke on that throughout the world for so many years prior to this. But I knew there was something there that was calling me to do something further and deeper for me. 
And so when I did that, I walked off my job, three week notice, got home, had a website completed, sitting there literally at my desk that I created in our kitchen. And at the time I was sitting here thinking, Lord, I feel really out of, I mean, strange, not out of place, just strange. What am I going to do right now? Here I am. I have my computer. You know, I have this website up and running now and I don't know what to do. And so something in me was like, you know what, Jeremy, there's, there's always power in you to know what to do. And I knew I felt that in me. There's something in me that said, you know what to do. Just let that kick in. Let it be the normalcy. Let what comes natural to you finally kick in, which you've never had the opportunity to do. And so guess what I did? I began to create my new normal. And I started that at that moment. And I said, you know what? You're right. I started reading like crazy. I started, you know, um, uh, looking at documentaries. I did everything I possibly could do. Now at the time, 20 years ago, of course, you know, we didn't have streaming, you know, like Netflix and everything else. I mean, there was things that were going on, but we could still, you know, get online, as you know, and look up stuff on YouTube and everything else. And I'm like, I looked up everything I possibly could because the reason why, because when we look up stuff that maybe sounds different, off the wall, doesn't feel like it connects to us. You never know what awakens in you. You don't know what you can listen to that will trigger something else that would trigger something else in you that would come to life. And so I listened to everything. I listened to anything and everything I possibly get my hands on. I knew the Bible back and forth. I, 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 I'm having no problem speaking before thousands of people. I mean, my goodness. I mean, right before that, I just pretty much got out of uh, speaking to 10,000 people, you know, in, in Indonesia, you know, with, along with Benny Hinn a week before me, you know, so I had no problem with that. But I knew in this moment that I had to kick in something that was a new normal for me. And when it kicked in, all of a sudden it just took that one day. During that one day, I started getting subscribers to the website. I started getting people that wanted to buy stuff, which I had maybe just a handful of product on there that I put on there from a distribution that I sort of connected with, you know, um, previously to that. And all of a sudden it was like something began to kick in. And my hunger for that started kicking in. And all of a sudden it's like I knew what I should do. I knew what to do. I knew what I can do. And I started doing this and doing this. And all of a sudden, within a week, guess what? I was in my new normal. I knew I loved it. I knew what was going on. I never had to borrow one penny from the bank. I never took out a loan, never borrowed money. I was making money from day one. Now, you might say, that's unheard of. It was unheard of. But nothing is possible for those that believe. And I started creating my my life as a masterpiece to begin to do what I needed to do. And during that time period, I began to create my life. I began to have vision boards. I began to, you know, write things down. And then it took even, let's say, I think it was four or five years later when I got, you know, um, my door sort of on my phone got, we'll say knocked on my door on the phone uh, of a publisher who said, hey, we want to publish your book. And I'm like, me? Publish a book? But I thought, you know what? Why not? It's my time to do that. And I didn't think it was my time, but I knew it was my time. And so I started doing that. And all of a sudden, I said, you know, let's create this program. Let's start writing more books. I had, you know, uh, a friend of mine, Doug Addison, prophesy, you know, hey, I feel like you're going to start, you know, distributing your own books and you're going to self-publish and you go on and off of publishers. Throughout the years, I published books to other publishers, but I started you know, self-publishing as well. And then one thing led to another. I started having partnerships. We started hiring people left and right. And so next thing I knew, I had this major corporation where I never had to borrow a penny. I look back now as of today in October, because October 1st is actually the anniversary of Identity Network, my business and ministry. And yet to this very day, I can look and say, guess what? I would have never known, even though I've life coached people all my life, went to school for it, got certified for it, the whole works, was a counselor for so, you know, for so long, and then never thinking I would have three books, much less a hundred books. But now look what happened. Look at my life now, because I knew the power was to start attracting these things in my life. I knew the power was to start fulfilling my destiny by start making my life do things that I wanted to do, that I'd love to do, and everything I didn't want to do, I threw it outside. Were there sacrifices of things I didn't want to do? Sure there was. But as far as making a lifestyle, a habit, a pattern out of things I didn't want to do, no way, Jose. I never thought about that again. I knew at that moment... If you don't feel as if you belong in where you are right now, that's because you don't belong. There's something higher and greater for you to be able to discover and do. And you need to start doing that. And I want to encourage each one of you today 
Take the power that you have inside of you, that God's given you. Start attracting your lifestyle. Start attracting the style of your living that you want to be able to incorporate within your life and your existence. You are here on this planet one time. One time, and throughout that one time of your life, guess what? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Because if you think about it, if you're in a job right now and you say, Jeremy, you know, what if I stepped off this job and got a new job that I really wanted to do? What if I started my own business? What, I be, what if I began to go back to school? Well, you know what? You might you might actually go through a hard time of, let's say, suffering for a couple of months or maybe three months or a little bit longer on what level of knowing that, you know what, you have to sort of sometimes, you know, get to the bottom before you, before you rise. So you might have to do some sacrifices for a while. But at the end of the day, you're going to find where your life will be fulfilled, satisfied, because you're doing what you want to do. And for the first time in your life, you become in control. That's the goal for you guys. That's the goal for all of us on this planet. Every joint supplies. Everybody has a supply that they can begin to fulfill every need on this planet. And it, all it takes is just one person to awaken and say, guess what? I'm stepping out by faith. I'm taking a walk on the water of my life and I'm going to be able to do something that I want to do. And it's going to prosper for you. Businesses prosper when there's love involved. Businesses prosper when your heart's involved, your feelings, your emotions are involved because your mind will start racing 90 miles an hour to be able to to, to, to be creative and, and get the job done. And that's how I became successful where I am today. And we keep on growing like crazy. We keep on expanding. We keep on having new revelation, new freedom, new insights, new liberty, new this and new that to be able to give to ourselves here at the ministry and then be able to offer it to the people to where you can find your own power, your own strength, your own lifestyle. Because this is a day the Lord has made. Be rejoicing and be glad in it because the, when the more you, re, you rejoice and be glad in it, you can begin to be creative within this day that God's given you. And that's the goal, folks, is to find your life within this life. Find your joy within the joy. Because a life is full of joy. If your life's not full of joy, change it. You might say, well, it's easier said than done. You know what? You're exactly right. It is easier said than done. But guess what? I've been there, done that. So I can tell you, I know. You know, it's hard for me to say something that I've never done and, and ask of you to do something. But guess what, folks? The shoe is now now on the other foot because I've been there. I've actually been that person that heard people tell me the same exact thing. And I said, nah, nah. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know what? Let's face reality, Jeremy. You're not happy in your life. You're not loving getting up in the morning, going to the job that you're not a big fan of. You, you know, No matter how big your paycheck or how small your paycheck, you're not satisfied. And I wasn't. And something in my life began to say, you know what, Jeremy? When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll do something about it. And I did. And it was because I knew there's more giftings in me. And I learned to respect myself by honoring who I was, who I am now, and who I'm going to be tomorrow. I began to honor the gifts that God's placed in me. I began to honor my mind to start thinking on higher thoughts, higher vibrational thoughts of love and joy and peace and health and prosperity and abundance. I began to allow my mind to begin to go further than it's ever gone before, to be creative, to step out of the box, to not be, you know, do, well, because I'm a Christian, i got to do this kind of Christian stuff. No, I, didn't, I, I stopped doing that. I stopped doing what everybody thought. Everybody kept on telling me was buzzwords and popular and powerful and, you know, well, everybody's doing this in Christianity right now. Well, I don't care what everybody's doing. If you want to get technical about it, the Bible mentions in the Old Testament that prophets were forbidden to prophesy what other prophets are prophesying. Did you know that? It was it, it, because God does not want people that are carbon copies. God's want, God wants originals. He wants people to say, I'm stepping out of the box. If no Christians do it, I'm going to do it. I began to talk about law of attraction before any other Christians started talking about it. And look what happened. Thousands upon thousands of people's lives have been changed, including hopefully yours that's listening to me today. I began to say, you know what? I'm going to begin to speak on the level, whether it's popular or not popular, because I know that if I be, begin to create a new lifestyle for me that is working for me, that I know God is behind, guess what? That means it's going to be the same for them because God will be behind them when you step out with the creativity, uh, your creative levels and begin to do something that's spectacular as well. Don't be a follower, folks. We have too many people in this world being followers. And let's face reality. Leaders are successful because they lead. 
They don't follow. They don't step on, you know, uh, out, you know, and just follow a track that's been worn out by other people. They begin to step out into faith and say, I'm going to create something that's never been, been here before. I'm going to start speaking on what I want to speak on, whether it's popular or not. I don't want to be the normal Christian person. You know, I'm not the I'm not I'm not the normal Christian person in and in, in, in Christian politics. I'm not the normal Christian person who speaks on what is what is popular. You know, you don't hear me going, you know, fire, 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 you know, because I'm not about an emotional you know, place where, and it's good for everybody else, but I don't want to stir up your emotions. I respect you more than that. I honor you more than just to get you excited to drop you off when you get home. If the mind does not change, you will return back to the same pattern and the same routine. And science knows that, and it backs it up by the Bible as well. It's like a dog that returns back to their vomit. Because I respect you enough to say it's time for you to get out of the box of being comfortable. It's, you know, it's time for you to step out of what people has been telling you that you need to do and do what you need to do do what you want to do do what God's called you to do and do it and yes you might go through some hell until you get up to the top but I guarantee you God will honor your steps of faith he will honor you stepping out on a limb and and your ending might turn out totally different than what you thought it was going to look like my ending so far I'm not at the end of my life praise God but my ending so far is to this very day didn't turn out like I thought it would be 20 years ago or 15 years ago or 10 years ago but you guess what it's actually better than I thought because I can't hold my mind to something to allow it to never change then I'm going to be the person that I've always been beforehand right I want to be able to change I want God to incorporate what he wants to incorporate through my steps of faith and so do that today folks Find a place where you can do what you need to do and do it beautifully because there's only certain things you can do that only you can do when you put your mind to it that no one else can do on this planet. You've got what it takes. And I want to encourage you and challenge you today to step out by faith. Study to show yourself approved. Watch documentaries. Read books. Hopefully read a lot of my books or all my books. You know, watch documentaries. Uh, learn of, of different things outside of even just the, your comfort zone or what your friends or what the buzzwords are or the popular buzz Christian, you know, books are in Christianity. Get outside of all that. There is a wealth of knowledge on this planet, a wealth of information and wisdom on this planet that people are, 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 are living into and they're succeeding and they're going past even just, you know, the, where the sky's the limit. They're going past the sky. And you can too. But if you allow yourself to stay under the umbrella of comfort and what everybody else is, is doing and you're trying to mimic them, you're never going to succeed. Until so you bust out of the bubble of being comfortable and what everybody else's opinions are about you and you start being you, guess what? The world will take notice and they'll recognize that you become the head and not the tail. You become above them and not beneath. And the power of positive thinking and the power of having a renewed mind actually does work. Because then you begin to place yourself where you say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And you're going to be able to do it. So today, start attracting what you need to attract. Respect your mind. Respect your life. Respect your body. And, 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 and get your body in shape. Get your mind in shape. Get, you know, start exercising your mind and your body. Exercise your soul. Exercise those feelings and emotions to stir up in joy and get yourself excited. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. You know what that means? It means David literally, he began to prophesy to himself, which means David literally put himself back together. That's what it means. It literally, in the original language, means David encouraged himself, meaning that David put himself back together, started preaching to himself, and pretty much saying, get up, David. Quit being this. Quit being that. Get up and start walking. Get up and start doing that. Well, I want to encourage you today. It's time for you to get up and start doing something with your life because your life has got so much potential. There's so much power in you that you have not even discovered yet. And today's the day of great discovery. Don't disrespect yourself. By not entertaining yourself. Don't disrespect yourself by not seeking yourself. Don't disrespect yourself by not allowing your body to find the rest and the strength it needs because you respect it to say tomorrow is going to be huge, so I need my full rest today. Start respecting the power of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And start doing something. How do you respect it? By utilizing the power that God has given you to put it to work. Put it to the test. 
Because it's going to come back to you on every wave. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You watch and see. Hey, by the way, real quick before we close our podcast, tonight is the night, folks. Many of you might not have, might be getting this in the future, but we'll do them again in the future. But tonight is the night, Wednesday, October 19th, 6 p.m. Central Time. I'm going to do a full hour of prophetic words for a full hour to as many people as I possibly can. So be prepared, be ready. If you do not get a prophetic word, hey, no biggie. Doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It just means right now might not be your time, or maybe God's going to show you and honor you even even more by telling it to you personally. So rejoice in that. But enjoy me tonight. Tell all your friends and family members tonight on my Instagram. So go on Instagram. It's going to be at Identity Network. And it's going to be me at 6 p.m. Central Time. So make sure you have notifications to when I go go live because I go live on Monday mornings at 6 p.m. on Instagram every week. But tonight is a night. All right. So if you want to get hopefully a freebie, or if you want to be able to get people involved, or just maybe get on there and pray with me, or just say, "Man, come on, I just want to hear that energy of that prophetic word beginning to stir up," then do it. Be a part of this tonight. Would love to see you tonight on Instagram, 6 p.m. Central Time, to do a free prophetic word night for an hour. I'm excited. So be a part of that. Tell your friends and family members. Hey, by the way, I say this all the time because it's so true. It's relevant. It's powerful. And it's right here and now. If you don't like your day so far, folks, change the way you're thinking. Pull some joy. Pull some a new vibration. Pull some energy. Pull your anointing out of joy. And when moment you do say, the rest of my day is going to be different and start thinking of how it's going to look and imagine yourself laughing. Imagine yourself having fun. Imagine yourself getting over the, the, the problem with a great solution that is now in you. And your day will completely change as of that moment. God bless you. We'll see you tonight. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.